Welcome to another episode of Exploring the North Shore. For this episode, we are back in Grand Marais and we are going to be featuring a, a series of artwork, three different pieces that you can see right now on your next visit to Grand Marais. So Martha, have you, have you seen these guys yet? I've only seen one and it was by total accident and it scared the life out of me. And I still, and I didn't know what it was until now. And basically what they are is, it is a, well, I'll let the artist kind of describe it more, but the basic is it's three life-sized sculptures made out of, I believe it is rebar metal and burlap. But again, I'll have the artist describe more when we interview her in just a moment here. So it's, yeah, it's just these three life-sized caribou. Caribou, of course, were animals that existed once here in the North Shore and have not existed here for a very long time. So in a way, this is the return of the woodland caribou to the North Shore. So I'm Jay. And I'm Martha. And this is Exploring the North Shore. This podcast episode is sponsored by Cascade Vacation Rentals. They know that life has a tendency to be overwhelming at times, and busy schedules often leave people feeling overwhelmed and disconnected. That's why they're here, to offer you the space and opportunity to reconnect to what's important. Cascade Vacation Rentals has one of the largest selections of privately owned vacation rental homes and cabins on Minnesota's North Shore of Lake Superior, from Duluth to the Canadian border. Their team is there to help you and your family or small group enjoy a vacation you'll remember for years to come. Visit them online at www.cascadevacationrentals.com. And don't forget to use promo code PODCAST for the largest percent off discount available at any given time. Again, that's www.cascadevacationrentals.com. Okay, I love that the seagulls are just going <laughs> crazy in the background over there. I think somebody just fed them. So what is your name? Corey Steckelberg. And what do you do? Um, I'm a visual artist and I do a lot of different I do I work in sculpture and I also paint and I I guess I do some other stuff too yeah <laughs> that's like everybody I think yeah. uh so we are currently at the Gremory Recreation Park walking right now towards your newest installation now is this your first installation my first public piece yeah okay and what is it called uh I call it once in future and how well, how would you describe it, I guess? Um, so it's like um, three caribou, life-size caribou that are, they have rebar frames. And then I quilted burlap, I quilted dirt between layers of burlap. And then um, they're kind of like stitched around the frames, kind of almost like upholstered. <laughs> and then to make this animal, to make the caribou and then um, the dirt has seeds in it and then it also has like tubing running through it so it can be watered um so then i mean i think they will ideally they will grow <laughs> it's still a question um but i'm pretty sure they will work i think i noticed i was looking at the one in the harbor park so they're like you said there are three mm -hmm. and they're kind of spread out and we're heading to the kind of the harder to find one the other two are a lot easier because you just sort of find one was the first one I saw because it Thanks. like almost gave you a panic attack. Yeah. I, well, we go hammock over there. So this is where we usually come. And I'm just walking and Casey's like, look at that. <laughs> I instinctively go into like fight mode and I was just like, oh, my God, what is that? I was ready to run and then I realized it wasn't real. We, yeah, I'll, I'll send it. And most of the people in the TikTok that we posted actually on the Cascade Vacation Rentals TikTok channel, we're like, wait a second, it's not moving and it doesn't have eyes. <laughs> I don't think it's real. I'm like, well, it's real. It's just not a real animal. Well, it's a real animal. It's just not a living, breathing animal. But mm -hmm. in theory, it will come to life eventually. Uh -huh. And is it grass seeds? Um, yeah, it's grass and wildflowers. And I think I put like squash. <laughs> I put a lot of things in there. That's that's actually really fun. <laughs> um, and I noticed the one in the Grammary Harbor Park actually had something spreading out of the bottom of one part of it. Oh, nice. So just one little thing. I was like, okay, maybe that's supposed to be there. <laughs> I hope it is. So it seems to be coming to life. Yeah, the one, the other one in the rec park is sprouting a little bit. Oh. So we'll go take a closer look at that when we're done here. And then it's supposed to last two years. Do you imagine it disintegrating or removing it as it looks now 
Um, yeah, I don't know what'll happen. I mean, my plan, what I have with the parks right now is one year. Okay. Basically, I think we're gonna just see what it looks like next year and then if everyone likes it still, <laughs> we'll leave it up. I mean, burlap is not a very weatherproof material. Yeah. So the idea is that it will be kind of deteriorating and growing at the same time. It'll be this like living, dying thing. Okay. And what inspired you to do this particular installation? Well, I mean, my work is like, you know, kind of environmental based. <laughs> um, so it's like, I don't know, just like the way it's, um, this is actually a very hard question. Um, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um, I just like to make stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you pick caribou? Oh, they're just really fun. But they used to live here yeah. as well. So they're like, I mean, they're like a, they used to live here. They don't live here anymore because of basically humans moving in. So it's kind of just like the, the idea is this, the impact humans have on the environment and then the way it changes. And then it's like, which is negative in some ways, but then it's also just like, it is also just the way of life. Yeah. Change is how everything is. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> they are different sizes though, and they're slightly different shapes and slightly different colors. What did you use for the burlap? Um, I actually just got burlap bags from Pika Coffee. Okay. Um, that's where all the burlap is from. <laughs> and then, yep. Okay. And then, yeah, they just happen to be different colors. And then you have gone through the city to do the installation. What was that process like? Harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't this supposed to happen? Was this supposed to happen last year? Was there something that got... Yeah, so, Perfectly. right, I got the grant at the beginning, because it was a Minnesota State Arts Board grant, and I got that at the beginning of 2020, and then they were supposed to be, I wrote the grant really tight, so they were supposed to be installed by June of that year, but then everything kind of fell apart, as everyone knows, and um, then I got to extend it, and then that was really good for me, because it made the project much better. <laughs> so it was almost a out. good thing. Yes, yeah. I. No, it no. worked well for me. Okay. <laughs> like I said, there's some good things that came out of 2020, and I think this might be one of them. And it was installed on in April, correct? The finished. I mean, I think I finished like just just at the very end of May. You mean April? I mean April. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not even quite the just end now. of May just yet. <laughs> and have you gotten much response or feedback from it yet? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. And it seems positive. <laughs> that's, yeah. I've heard a few people say it's a little creepy, but in a way that's kind of a, a part of it. That's what I'm going yeah. for. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that was an unintentional response. <laughs> and uh -huh. so we are now really getting close to the one that I recorded that is in Harbor or in uh, the rec park. And it's hidden in the woods. And I noticed that if you come at it from the side we're about to come at it from, you really don't see it. It's when you come at it from the lake side. No. Well, I guess I... Because this is... I usually I, come this way. We missed it until we were coming back out. But you were coming this way, right? But we came in this way. But did you come in this way? No. <laughs> so I walked back here with a couple other people who knew where it was located. And as we approached it... Uh, let's head back in there, actually, because I want to see if it's sprouting yet. This is the one that doesn't get as much sun. Mm -hmm. So it may be the last one to go. Uh, but I missed it when we walked past. It wasn't until we were looking at, we were like at that bench and we walked back that I was like, oh, wait, there it is. Were you looking for it? I was. And the person I was with knew exactly where it was. Oh, we have a sprout. <gasps> Yay. Look at that. It's a little baby. It's oh, my Here's goodness. One. There's one up here, too. This one's fun because the day after we installed it, there was mouse poop on it. Oh. And then look, somebody chewed its little eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> It's giving back. Oh, oh there's working. a lot. Awesome. So I was here when I took the first video that I had no idea it was going to blow up like it did. So I didn't really, I didn't take the video with the purpose of really explaining it too much. Uh, there's nothing on it. And that was a uh, Wednesday of last week. Mm -hmm. So less than a week later and it's got, it's back is getting pretty covered. We have had some warm days and we've had some rain. In fact, he peels feels pretty saturated. Now he's being held up with this. It looks like a single bar. Does he also have something in his feet? Yeah. Okay. There's, yep. There's bars on all the feet. Um, this one was really hard cause there was a lot of rocks. Yeah. Um, and then this is just the bar that you can see is like to keep it from the balance is really difficult because the heads are so much more heavy. So it's just oh, okay. a counterbalance. 
That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed the uh, pipe to hook the hose up is up around here somewhere. We, we noticed that. Yep, there it is. Hidden behind his ear. Do you have a favorite? I like the one on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have names? Um, I, th I believe this one is called Sprinkle Ring. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one on the road is called Lil Buddy. <laughs> And then the one in the park is called The Mother. The Mother. I love that. We had people who were like, that's Larry. I'm like, that's kind of hilarious to name a caribou Larry. I like Little Buddy. Little Buddy's my favorite. <laughs> so anything else you want to tell us about this piece? And what when it, so when it goes to be removed, let's pretend it has basically disintegrated and it's just the metal frame. Mm -hmm. Will they leave the metal frame or will you take that away? Um, I guess it kind of depends on the parks. Um, I was planning on taking it. Okay. I mean, technically they could be for sale. <laughs> oh, well, that's so. good to know. <laughs> All right. Well, this is really cool. Like it, it almost looks, um, a little bit like it's been, uh, Frankenstein together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So different parts and pieces. Did you go look at it up close when you passed the first time, Martha? No, this is no, your I first, didn't. First yeah, impressions. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's so cool. I can't wait to see it grow more. I'm almost picturing coming down here one day and it's just green. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. oh, moss poop. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So the, the animals have found it. How long did each one take you to make? So the I think I was able to sew on the um, skin in about three weeks. And then the rebar part took in probably two weeks. So they probably both each took about a month. Okay. A little over a month, yeah. All right. And how long, when when they went to go install it, how long did that process take? Well, we did one in the Harbor Park. That one went pretty fast, and that took, like, um, we did that, like, in the in a morning. I had a lot of help, <laughs> and then everyone had to go to work or something. <laughs> so then the other one, these ones took, I think I finished these ones over the next week. Oh, so you did them all by yourself? Or, well, you uh, had to I have had some a, help. help yeah. <laughs> how much does this guy weigh? Well, I mean, with when it's wet, I think it'll probably weigh a ton. <laughs> when it isn't wet, I think it's probably like 160 or something. Because, I mean, it's like pretty irritating to carry with two people, but it's not too heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I was, it's, it's, so I'm standing, I'm about five foot seven. I'm sitting right next to this guy and he goes chest level almost like actually more like stomach level. But then these horns are just massive. And these are just rebar as well. Yep. And they're over my, almost over my head, if not, they're over yeah, they're head. over my head. <laughs> so it's a, almost a six foot tall in some parts. And then, what, nine feet long? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty, it's, it's big enough to be big, but it's small enough that it will blend in. And especially, I think, as it gets more green, people are going to have a harder time finding it. So how would you describe how to find this spot? I actually keep it really secret. Okay. I just tell everyone I that like they're that. all inside city limits. <laughs> That's perfect. I like that. <laughs> and there, it's in a public, it. it's in a public area. I mean, the public yeah. can come here, but. Yeah, the two, I mean, there's two in the rec park. So then, and everybody always sees the other one. Yeah. I actually was trying to get a video of the one in the Harbor Park. And these people were just like, what is it? <laughs> And they were looking all over. And there's no actual documents or anything that explain what it is. So where can people go to find out information about you and information about the pieces? Um, well, you can go to my website, um, wolfhelm.com. I'll link that. Don't Thank worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm actually going to put up signs. Okay. Too. So then those, those will be here soon. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering about that because it was. It, I could see people being really alarmed by it almost if they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But okay. Those were once upon a time living trees. Well, they still look. They, I mean, they, they might. I don't know. It's, but they just, they're not, there was space for them to get into the, um, into the dirt. And then if you put most fresh saplings into dirt, they kind of like do something, live for a little while, like a flower, <laughs> flower in a pot. But, um, but they just didn't. They, I don't think they got far enough in, basically. <laughs> so I was just commenting on the difference between we're now at the top of the rec part. Oh my goodness, there's a duck down there. A couple ducks. They're just chilling out. And I noticed the difference between the first one we looked at and this one is primarily how the horns are because the horns in this one are saplings, little tiny tree branches. And the other one were um, part of the rebar wrapped in canvas. Or what is this? Burlap. 
So there's rebar wrapped in burlap. And this one is sprouting a little bit more, not, I was actually expecting a little bit more compared to the last one, but. So it's sprouting on this side. Oh yeah. Oh, I guess that's where the sun. Wouldn't the sun hit it more over here? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> stuff by the back. We are not botanists. <laughs> Like it, it, over here, there's like a ton on this side. And now that I'm standing up next to him, it, it does seem like he's the same size as the other one. For some reason, it looks smaller to me, probably because I kept seeing it from really far back. But yeah, this one's kind of longer. He's got a pokier butt. Yeah, she's just skinnier. <laughs> so this is little buddy? Yeah, this is little buddy. Yeah. Hi, little buddy. Very and cool. I think the one in Harbor Park is the smallest. I don't know, but they all. Roughly the same. Kind of, are. yeah, basically. What inspired you? Because it is a bit of a thought piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then my, my previous piece to this one was, um, it was called Unreasonable Giving, and it was this giant wolf that I, did, I made at the art colony. Um, I had a residency there in 2019. So I stitched all the skin onto this wooden frame, and then I had the audience cut it apart. Um, and then it revealed all these organs, and it was all like, the inside was all red, and it was like very violent and really gross. Uh, which was surprising. Um, <laughs> um, and so, I mean, it was like this destructive, like, kind of like this, what I want, I mean, this is always extremely hard for me to say, I can't get the words to flow properly, but it's like what I want for all of my environmental work is, I want it to be about this acceptance of, and like um, accepting, people accepting their culpability, culpability for destruction. Mm -hmm. And of course the wolf was like quite direct and this is like less, this is pretty more, I mean, sort of more subtle, but you know, it's, you watch this happen and I mean, I, hopefully they I think deteriorate. Yeah. And I think they're, I mean, definitely this one that's outside kind of more exposed to the sun and the elements mm -hmm. is showing more growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, I look and I just go down, it's not sprouting yet, but it's, <laughs> it kind of reminds me a little bit of a chia pet. And that oh yeah I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you just made yourself some life size caribou chia pets, but it, you know then once it's it's done sprouting in theory it'll die and then you'll we'll probably in the fall have a completely different looking caribou than we did in the summer because mm -hmm. it might be covered with the dead leaves or whatever or the dead plants or mm -hmm. grass. So it's gonna be kind of a cool thing and then come back in the winter and have it covered in snow and right. a completely different. So it's almost like you're going to see four different caribou over the course of the next year, pretty much. Yeah. So I just had the best idea ever. <laughs> now people do like the pictures where each season is like a different slit in the photo. Mm -hmm. We should do that with these. <gasps> oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, on the next sunny day, I'm going to come here. It's kind of... Oh, I have great ideas. <laughs> you do! <laughs> this is definitely something we're going to be following up on because it's ongoing and it's pretty cool. And it's something anybody can see because they are in public areas. So. Yeah. so thank you so much for joining us today, Corey. And we'll let you carry on with your day. We're going to go check out the one in the harbor and take some pictures. Um, I also, I am also going to be documenting them and then I'll be posting them to my website. So then perfect. they'll be a... We'll link in the show notes okay. so that everybody can follow can get there and follow along. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Exploring the North Shore is sponsored by The Big Lake. The Big Lake is an approachable art gallery and gift shop located in the beautiful harbor town of Grand Marais, Minnesota, as well as online at thebiglakelife.com. The Big Lake provides a beautifully curated and fun shopping experience to complement your North Shore adventures with artists and products that reflect the culture, values, allure, and lifestyle of the North Shore. Shop online at www.thebiglakelife.com and use promo code EXPLORE for 15% off your first online order. Uh, so I should mention what quickly what spurred this uh, interview and the whole thing was I did a TikTok for uh, Cascade Vacation Rentals, not exploring the North Shore. So don't go to our TikTok to find this. Go to at StayCVR on TikTok to see the video. You'll know which one it is right away. It's the one with a ton of views. And I had done kind of a, just a short video of me approaching it. I, I imagine it's kind of what you went through, like walking up to it being, what is yeah. that? <laughs> you see it through the woods first and it's this white object that doesn't look like it fits. And I just recorded myself walking up to it and 
I knew what it was. So I asked the question on there. What is, what is it more of a question of what do you think it is? And I think a lot of people thought I didn't know what it was, but obviously I did. Um, but it got three over 300,000 views. So we figured this is something that interests people. So I reached out to Corey and that led to the interview. And now we have gone through, of course, during the interview, we looked at both the caribou that are in the rec park. And then we just finished looking at the one in the Harbor Park. So again, there's two located in the rec park and we're not going to tell you where. One is easy to find, but you're probably going to miss it. The other one is harder to find and you're also probably going to miss it. So it, <laughs> yeah, look for it. Just look for it. You'll find it eventually. Have fun, explore. Even though it's the first one is wide in the open, I drove past it maybe five or six times before I saw it. And the only reason I saw it is because somebody told me where to look to see it. And I looked, I was like, oh, it's just right there. The one in the Harbor Park is probably the easiest one to find. Yeah. And it's just there. Go to the Harbor Park, you know, the area that is across from like the Gunflint Tavern and joins Ben Franklin and the Johnson's Heritage Post. Just walk around and you will see it. You cannot miss it. Um, it it's it's not blending in, it's chilling out. And I think that's going to be the easiest one to see and to watch as it kind of grows up. I like the idea of it growing. <laughs> so it's going to come to life. It's not fully alive right now, although they're starting to come to life already. Be sure to check them out on your next trip up to the North Shore. We will have an article all about the Woodland Caribou uh, and the entire installation on our website. And of course, we're going to link to Corey's website where you can follow along with their progress over the course of the next year. And, you know, we it, it's guessing what's going to happen to it is they're going to sprout and it's going to come to life. And it's going to be like I think I mentioned earlier, kind of a actually, I don't know if that made it into the interview, but I, I said it made me think of a life size Chia pet. I think it did. I think. Uh, uh, <laughs> did uh, I record that part? I, think, I don't know. I don't know. There was parts of the conversation I forgot to record. I'm sorry. But yeah, kind of a life-sized chia pet, but it's also meant to make you think and reflect on what sort of impact you have on the environment and on animals in the environment. And I, I like that. I like that it's it's more than just a sculpture. It's not just a statue. It's not just a sculpture. There's more to it than that. And it's going to change and be a completely different you know, it's going to look different a month from now, two months from now. So we'll, we'll document it. We'll make some Instagram and TikToks on it, both on Exploring the North Shore and Cascade Vacation Rentals, because I manage both of those. So I just sort of go back and forth, which with who gets what feature. But this has been uh, another episode of Exploring the North Shore. We are going to be back again. Uh, we actually have about three episodes in the queue. We have part two of Canal Park, our trip to Canal Park, which I said in the last episode was going to be next, but then this happened. And this has a little bit more of a timely feel to it to me since it's already up, it's already going, um, and, and Canal Park is, is not going to go anywhere. So we're going to do part two next week. And then hopefully the next episode we have coming up after that is going to be an episode all about the Northern Lights. So stay tuned. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, if, if there is not an episode coming up about Northern Lights, it's because we failed today. I'm pre I'm like pre previewing our plans. Uh, this has been Jay. And Martha. And this has been Exploring the North Shore. We'll see you soon. Bye.